Blessed God. Thank you. Thank you, Prophet Kerry. A blessed good evening, good night. Hallelujah. I greet you in the name of Jesus. I welcome each and every one of you. I give honor to the Lord God Most High, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, God who is our Savior and our Redeemer and is breathing us today that we can be here and we can worship him. I give honor to Dr. Belfield Belgrave, our overseer, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And um, God allowing him, hallelujah, using him to open doors that I may even have this opportunity to minister the word of God and hallelujah, to fulfill the purpose and the destiny for which God has called me. I bless each and every one of you. I also give honor to Prophet Skibaran for inviting me this evening on this platform. I can guarantee you that this will not be the last. Hallelujah. It's my first, but it will not be the last. In the name of Jesus, I greet you. Hallelujah. She wanted me to do a teaching, but she said, go as the Holy Spirit flows. And uh, Prophet Kerry just said, healing, healing. And this evening, I'm going to go to a very familiar scripture. And Prophet, this message only came this morning. I was by the prayer altar. And the Lord said to me, the nations need healing. And he sent me to, the Holy Spirit sent me to Second Chronicles chapter 7, a very familiar scripture. Second Chronicles in chapter 7, and we're going to go to verse 13. And I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name, he said, my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. God says, if I shut up heaven, he didn't say if the enemy shuts up heaven. If I command the locusts to devour the land, if I send pestilence among my people, he says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, Father, this evening in the mighty name of Jesus, we are your people, God, that you have called. Father, you have called me, Lord God. You have appointed me and you have anointed me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I come here to speak to your people, God, as instructed by you, Lord God. Father, I submit my will to your will. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your word go forth with fire. Let your word go forth with power. Let your word be a lamp unto the people's feet and a light unto our path in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak not of myself, but I speak that which the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, will give me utterance, oh God, to speak this evening to your people. I pray, almighty God, in the name of Jesus, that hearts will receive you lord receive your word god hallelujah bring understanding to your people may the eyes of the understanding be enlightened in the mighty name of jesus
Lord, we pray for those now wherever they are, whether they're at home, whether they're at work, God, in the name of Jesus. We subdue powers, oh God, that will cause distraction, that would want to cause hindrances in the name of Jesus. We overrule every plot of the enemy against your people. Your word, hallelujah, God, hallelujah, is above your name. You said you let there be light and there was light. Let your word take entrance into the lives of your people and let it be light to them, Father. Lord, I thank you. I humble myself, hallelujah, under your hand, God. Father, your spirit is upon me because you have called me, God, to preach good news to the meek, hallelujah, to bind up the brokenhearted and to set those captives free in the name of Jesus. It is not by my might, Lord. It is not by my power, but by the spirit of the almighty God. Take full control this evening, Father, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. We're also going to go to Ezekiel in chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 13. And it says, I'm reading from the King James Version. And I saw for a man among them that shall make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. The Lord says, I sought for a man that should make up the hedge. Hedge. helps to enclose you. It's a form of protection. A hedge is also a boundary. And stand in the gap before me for the land. Brothers and sisters in Christ this evening, we are seeing so many things that are happening in our nations. When we read the news, go to social media, even hear from others. It is though everything is in turmoil in the land. Everything is in turmoil. Nothing seems to be functioning or working right. Nothing seems to be in order. Both God's children and even the children of the world are frustrated. People are angry, they're confused, people are despondent, pardon the traffic. They're upset, they're giving up on life. We as the children of God need to know the word of God and we need to discern the times and seasons according to 1 Chronicles 12 and 32. Like this anointing of the sons of Issachar, we need to know the time and the seasons. The Bible tells us that in the last days there'll be wars and rumors of wars. What are we seeing in our various territories and jurisdictions? The Bible tells us that the love of men will wax cold. We see people killing each other, murders. I can speak for here in Barbados. Prophet Kerry, what's, what's the number we have so far? I, I actually lost. No, I think we were close to, what, 36 for the year so far? Um, I'm, I, I lost count myself. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I actually, I remember that 33. Now we had three murders in one day, three killed in one day. And then by the night, there was another one. So I think we are around 38 for a population of 280,000. It's probably under that now, especially after COVID. 280,000. And I'm subject to correction between 36, 36 to 38 murders already. And I'm in an island of 166 square miles. Persons are discontent, dissatisfied with leadership in their country. There's a lot of protests. People are seeing that more and more their so-called rights are being impinged upon, infringed upon. You're not in a prison, but the society you're living in 
feels as though it's becoming a prison. More and more authorities are trying to control the lives of people through laws, policies, legislations. People are being laid off from work. And those who are working, it feels as though you're under a fear of as though daily it is slavery. We look at our children and we're wondering what's happening to our children. Engaging in behaviors that are immoral, illicit behaviors, the adults not setting examples and agreeing that, you know what? This is a new age, this is a new era. So therefore we give our children the liberty and there seems to be a mass of confusion. What are we doing as believers? Here in Barbados, they complain a lot. We complain. There are many um, calling radio programs that people call to air their issues. They air their issues on social media. Everybody is complaining. They even complain and saying the church is not doing enough. But God says, I look for a man to stand in the gap for the land. The God of this world has blinded the eyes of people. And they're looking for carnal solutions to spiritual problems, and it's not going to work. You cannot look for a carnal solution to a spiritual problem. And the problem in many nations, although we know prophecy has to be fulfilled, people have moved away from God. The hearts of men have been hardened, become callous. Nobody ever thinks about God anymore. Or they do think about God only when something tragic happens. And that's very few. We become very liberal. So the very thing that is used to guide us, the Bible, the church, has now become a show for all. Their churches and then their churches. Watered down beliefs and religions. We have allowed any and everyone to walk into the house of God, the sacred house of God, walk onto the pulpits, and I should say the altar, and preach or minister to suit people so we are not ministering hell anymore damnation anymore and not saying that the gospel is about hell and damnation we're not telling people anymore that to live in a home with a partner and not being married to them for 14 and 15 years that it is wrong it is okay now to have several sexual partners it is okay now to be diverse Freedom of expression, they call it. So the nations are in turmoil. But I want to say to you this afternoon, we who are called by God, God is looking for a man, a woman to stand in the gap for the nations. Many believers are throwing up their hands. And they're saying, whatever will be, will be. Do you understand the authority that you carry in Christ? To stand in the gap. Nehemiah realized that there were breaches in the wall. And we're going to go to Nehemiah in chapter 1. Nehemiah realized that there were breaches in the wall. And Nehemiah prayed. Nehemiah chapter 1, the word of Nehemiah, the son of Halakha. And it came to pass in the month of Shizlu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan the palace, that Hanai, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped. 
which were left of the captivity and concerning with Jerusalem. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity, there is in the province of great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. The walls of many of our nations are broken down. The gates, we have allowed the enemy to possess the gates to our nation. So any and everything diabolical is happening in our nations. And we cannot throw our hands up in the air and say, well, we don't care. You live in your nation. You live in the UK. I live in Barbados. You live in Trinidad. You live in Tobago. You live in Jamaica. We can't throw our hands up in the air and say, oh, what will be, will be. Because what affects the nation will also affect you. Mind you, there was a famine in Egypt, but the children of Israel were in Goshen. God can cover you and he can hide you in the ark of safety. But that does not mean that you do not pray and that you do not intercede and you do not seek God unless you've gotten instructions from God not to pray. And when Nehemiah heard these words, he was grieved. He sat down, verse 4, and it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before God, the God of heaven. And this is what Nehemiah said. I beseech thee, O God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth the covenant and mercy to them that love him and obey his commandments. Let thine ear be attentive and thy eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I may pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel that we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. And it went on to say, we have dealt corruptly with God and have not kept the commandments. So he was confessing the sins. We have not kept your judgments. We have not kept your um, the commandments of Moses. And remember, he said, remember, I beseech thee. He was petitioning God for a nation. The people out there can't go and do it. The people who are blinded by the God of this world cannot go out there and do it. They're blind. They're being bewitched. We should be the ones in the nation praying for the nation and causing change. The watchmen and watchwomen on the wall. It takes one man, one man. But we're distracted and we're complaining. We're complaining. Praying for the nations, praying on behalf and asking God to forgive us of our sins. Praying that God will change the hearts of the leaders. From a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. Do you understand the importance of prayer? Do you understand the importance of intercession? Do you understand the power that you carry? Do you understand the change that it brings? Or are we there telling ourselves, I'm only one little person, ain't making a difference. Daniel in Daniel chapter 9 interceded on the behalf of the people. There's a serious prayer of repentance in Daniel in chapter 9. One man that stood in the gap. We are called to nations and kingdoms. According to Jeremiah 1 and 10. You're called to pull down and to tear down and to pluck up and to uproot. And to build and to plant. That is the power of your prayers. We cannot sit back and see things happening in our nations and say, oh, let's leave it there. And then you're suffering under the hands of the pharaohs. You're suffering under the hands of the, the Herods. You are called. 
you are called to speak forth, to declare God's truth, truth, to declare his word, to speak thus saith the Lord, to speak into the situations, to get up at night. Pray, go before your altar and pray. And that's God to show you what is happening within your nation, within your family, within the territory, within the jurisdiction, whatever boundaries that you are in. The nations need healing. The people need healing. But what are we doing? And I was guilty of this. Pray, praying for me by four and no more. When you see certain things happening in the nation, ask God to intervene. And even before it happens, and not only things that are negative, not only the killings, the murders, On evenings, we should be asking God to possess the gates to our nation. We should be asking God to destroy the altars that have been opened in our nation, or being, rather the altars that have been set up, that are, being, that are being used as portals, as gateways, as entry points, as diabolical highways to traffic spirits into the nation. You may be in your little parish, you may be in your little region. You may not even go island wide or country wide or nationwide. You can even ask God to control, to manage, to overrule those territorial spirits that are over your neighborhood. We must humble ourselves before the Lord. Do not expect the people of the world to do it. And believe me, I can speak from a perspective where I am here in Barbados. They got so many people in Barbados. I've heard Prophet Kerry said this, and I mean the education system with degrees, diplomas, degrees, associate degrees, degrees, masters, doctorates. And if you see the, the, the names of persons now, if you see the, the letters behind their names, and we have this thing in Barbados now. Everyone you appoint to positions, I'm not saying, don't get me wrong, don't study, study. It's important. It's important. And, and I am in no way saying that these things are not important and they are not necessary and they cannot be used. Exercise wisdom. And there's a lot of talk. There's a lot of narrative, dialogue. These are the solutions. And they're speaking with such eloquence. Sometimes the language they're using, you have to have a dictionary or Google to understand the words. But at the end of the day, empty, nothing. Absolutely nothing. In fact, I would dare say our problems have increased and multiplied exponentially. Because man is relying on his own strength. He is relying on the degrees that he has. I'm a learned person. I'm an educated person. Therefore, I have the solutions. And they're not humbling themselves before God. The God who is filled with all knowledge and all wisdom and all understanding. But you who have the gifts, and the Bible says your gift will make room for you. You who have, hallelujah, the attention of God. You who go before the throne of God. Who have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. There are people who can't get to the prime minister and the president. You have to go through all of the procedures. But we go through the procedures with God too as well. We enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. But we have a direct line to our Heavenly Father. We are the solution. We are the solution. You are the solution. 
And I want to say to you tonight and this afternoon, you need to stand in the gap for your country. You need to stand in the gap for your nation. You need to stand in the gap for your island. You need to stand in the gap for the parish that you live in, the region that you live in, that jurisdiction that you live in. You need to bind territorial powers and territorial demons that's causing economic problems in your country. You need to bind the territorial powers and demons that are causing sickness in your country. You need to bind the territorial powers and demons that are causing your children to go astray. And they use the systems. They use the seven mountains. They use the arts and the entertainment. They use business and finance. They use these sectors. They work through people. They get close to those who are in leadership. And they become their advisors. They become their supporters. Financially and otherwise. Meanwhile, they're trying to get to the hearts of the leaders and the minds of the leaders. Wasn't it not Simon the sorcerer that had bewitched the people? Spirits of bewitchment, whereby now people we are, we can't speak out, we can't say anything against persons in leadership. And we've been given a gag order because those spirits have caused spirits of fear. Fear and intimidation. We are muted. And please do not let the enemy shut you up. You, yes, you have to be exercised the wisdom. We have to know when to speak. We have to know when to be silent. We have to know when to speak. And ask God for the wisdom to speak to as well. But we've been given guide, guide orders. And as though we have gone. And we're being led like lambs to a slaughter. We are called to intercede. God says he's looking for a man to stand in the gap. Who will make up the hedge. Who will repair the breaches. And if you're not called at that level, you're called to make up the hedge and repair the breaches for your family in the church. In your neighborhood. What are we doing? What are we doing? Brothers and sisters in Christ, we cannot faint. When you fall, get up and go again. Ask God to refresh you. To renew you, to rejuvenate you. Get up and go again. Your rest is in the Lord. But we are complaining. We're crying, but what are we doing about it? God said he has given us dominion, domain, dominance. We have to walk in it, not just speak it. And I always say that when I, I minister the message I take for me first. And this morning at the altar, this is the Lord is saying to me, nations need healing. What are we, his people, doing We cannot stay in the four walls. The church needs to wake up. We need to wake up. We need to be in prayer. We need to be praying and not playing. As a man of God had said, praying and not playing. We need to be interceding. How many of us on evenings? Depending on where we are. Because I know persons may be at work. You can possess your gates at six in the evening. You don't have to possess your gates at midnight. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Possess your gates. 
possess the gates to your family, to your nation, to your, your neighborhood, to the region. But yet we're, we're complaining. Oh Lord, price is high. Oh Lord, you see how the children behaving? Lord, you see how the, what the government is implementing, the policies? And God is not pleased with us. He's not pleased. There's a slumber in the church. There's a slumber among the body of Christ. And instead of being the head, we are allowing others to lead us. We are the head and not the tail. We should be advising leaders. And you may not get to be next to a president or a prime minister, but where you are in your home, where you are and where you live, my God, when you get up to prayer, you can make change. By petitioning God. The saying that goes, even the devil is afraid of even the, the weakest sinner on their knees. If my people who are called by my name. We are seeing these things. According to 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 13. Locusts devouring the land. We are hardly growing crops in Barbados. We know that some of this has been diabolically orchestrated. They have other plans for the agricultural land. We're going green. You go green, but we're not planting any food. The things that human beings need to sustain them, the basic needs. So much of our agricultural land is now being used for um, solar energy wind energy. The area where I live, I, I am now seeing um, that the land is being earmarked and live close to a lot of farms. The land is being earmarked now for windmills, for them to put up some wind turbines. And this is land that grew sugar cane, um, sweet potatoes and those things. We can't sit idly by and say that we do not have a part to play. We need to get out of the mindset, me, my four, and no more. And it's always, Lord, what I want, you want. The house, the land, the car, the white picket fence, and 2.5 children. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God is calling us to another level, another dimension. Who shall enter the heaven? Only those that do the will of God. Only those that do the will of God. And the Lord says to us in his word. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. This evening I want to admonish each and every one of us. Go in that place. We need to humble ourselves before God. Pray and seek his face. Turn from our wicked ways. He says, then will I hear from heaven, forgive your sins and heal your land. Ezekiel 22 and 30. God says, I'm looking for a man to stand in the gap. To make up the hedge, but I found none. Is that you? Is it, is it me? Is it you? That God is calling, saying, I need you to stand in the gap for nations, for your nation. I need you to stand in the gap for your neighborhood. Let me start with the community first. You may need to stand in the gap for your family, your community your region, your nation. 
what are we doing? Are we so enthralled with ourselves? We're not here to criticize anyone. Are we so enveloped in ourselves? A nation has people, it's made up of people. Those are souls that are being lost. We have children, there are generations that we need to guard. That we need to pray for and direct them in the way of the Lord. So I want to admonish us. You have to go before God and repent. And ask God for forgive, to forgive us of not doing his will. We're not to be doing God's will in part. We're to be doing his will in the whole. Totally. Repent. Ask God to show us the Holy Spirit to spot his light on us. Then we do that introspection, that evaluation by the Holy Spirit. And start afresh. And say to God, here I am, Lord, send me. God, you're looking for a man to stand in the gap. Here I am, Lord, I am willing. Many of us may be telling ourselves at this point in time, who me? No, maybe that anointing is for someone special. But I always say, if we lack anything, it is not, it is our fault. It is not the fault of God. The resources from the kingdom of God, they are unlimited. And we must know the power or the mantle of power that we're walking in and the authority that we're walking in and whose authority we're walking in. So I admonish you this evening, I admonish us to humble ourselves, seek God's face, turn from our ways and stand in the gap on behalf of our families, on behalf of our communities, on behalf of our nation, on behalf of our region. In the name of Jesus. Father, I give you thanks this evening. Prophet Kerry. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus.